So you're gonna do the lesson opener, pause the video, try it. I want you to do it, no calculator. Even if you make a mistake, that's okay because we wanna learn from mistakes. Remember, as you go through evaluating expressions, to use PEMDAS. PEMDAS is parentheses first, then exponents next, then multiply, divide, and order from left and right. One's not more important than the other. And finally, add and subtract. Again, one's not more important than the other. Just go left to right. You got this. Pause and try. See you soon. All right, let's check the lesson opener and see how you did. Evaluate the expression given g equals three, h equals negative two, and i equals two thirds. Okay, let's get into our lesson and review some skills. So you already know these, but we wanna remind you of the vocabulary just in case you haven't heard it or you don't remember it. We're going to be solving equations. It's an equation because we have one thing equal to another, not just because there's an equal sign. As we solve equations, we're gonna work backwards through PEMDAS. So if you're ever wondering like, ooh, which part do I do first? Well, we wanna undo, add, subtract, undo, multiply, divide, undo, and so on. So that can always help you make that decision. Let's look at the first one. So the first one we wanna solve for P here. So we have P plus Q equals R. So if I wanna get P by itself, I need to get rid of that Q. So Q is being added. So naturally I'm gonna subtract it to the other side. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. And that leaves me with P equals R minus Q. Now there I use the subtraction property of equality. All right, and then as we look at B, go ahead and do that one really quick, pause it. And we're back. Of course we wanna use that inverse operation for minus Q. We're gonna add Q to both sides and you have to write it on both sides or, or frankly you've miscommunicated, okay? So we have the addition property of equality. If I add the same thing to both sides of the equation, it's still an equation, it's still equal. So your final answer here is P equals R plus Q. Now I know you guys might think we're a little silly emphasizing all these little steps when it seems really intuitive. Showing these steps is how you communicate mathematically. That is our major standard in pre-AP Algebra 2. You have to show these steps. So C, you might have already done this while we were talking. P times Q equals R. We want to undo the multiplication, so we're going to use the inverse operation division. So I'll divide by Q. Remember to use that fraction bar. We're not going to go divide by sign. We're in Algebra 2 now. So fraction bar, divide by Q, divide by Q, write it on both sides, division property of equality, and we get P equals R divided by Q. Or, since P, Q, and R are all real numbers, I could use my properties of real numbers we learned before, and I could use inverse property of multiplication to multiply by one over Q on both sides to get rid of that Q next to P as well. So if I do that, then I have P equals, well, R times one over Q is just R over Q. Last, we see that we have P divided by Q equals R. Well, we wanna undo divide by, so we're going to multiply by, multiplication property of equality, multiply by Q on both sides, show it, and then we get P equals R times Q, or Q times R, because what? Multiplication is commutative. Let's practice the properties of equality solving each equation for X. Where do we start in this first example? Well, backwards through PEMDAS. So let's undo, add, or subtract. I see a plus B. That means I will need to subtract B from both sides using subtraction property of equality. Now I'm left with A times X equals C minus B. Next, undo, multiply, or divide. So I'll undo that A times X, divide A, divide A. X equals C minus B, all divided by A. If needed, we could take this one more step. We could go ahead and separate into two separate fractions. So X equals C divided by A minus B divided by A. I would say no need to do this unless there's a good reason, but I think it's important that we recognize it mathematically. Those are the same equations. Wow, that wasn't too bad. Let's try another one. Looking here, I wanna get X by itself again, but this time I have minus B. So I need to add B to both sides. That leaves me with X divided by A equals C plus B. Okay, let's undo that division now and multiply it by A. Here I have to be really careful when I multiply by A because right now it looks like I'm just multiplying B by A. I need to hug out that C plus B in parentheses so that they all get multiplied by A. X equals C plus B times A, or I could just use the community property of multiplication and write A parentheses times C plus B. Is there an equivalent form? Yeah, I could use the distributive property and distribute A to both C and B. Pause the video and try H and I. How 
to do. Both of these had a little extra something and you may not have known how to handle it. So in this first one, we add B to both sides. B plus B is 2B. And then of course, just finish out by dividing by A. The next one, we go ahead and add D, no problem, but then we're left with A times B times X. Well, just for emphasis, you can go ahead and use that division property of equality and divide out both A and B, the product of A and B, all at the same time. Just think about if A was two and B was three. Well then two times three is six, we just divide by six on both sides. So dividing by AB on both sides is equivalent. As we continue through the examples, communicate mathematically. It's one of our major national math standards. We must communicate mathematically. So even if something is like, oh, I could probably just do that in my head or do two steps at once, don't. We need to see the properties of equality exercised in the proper order. Also, be sure you're pausing. That's how you learn. On this next one, we really could solve in two different ways. The first way, I see those parentheses and I immediately start thinking distribute. So I could distribute the A through and have AX plus AB equals C. Then I wanna go after that X. That's kinda of like the problem we just did before. Well, undo add subtract first, so subtract A times B, I can do that to both sides, leaving me with AX equals C minus AB. Then I just have to divide off the A. X equals C minus AB all divided by A. Now the second way is I can go ahead and undo the multiplication right away. So I can divide out the A from both sides of the equation, leaving that X plus B equals C divided by A. Simply subtract the B and we're done. This looked like it was a little bit quicker and easier. Mind you, it really depends on the numbers, which method I would use. As I look at those two answers, they really don't look the same. Are they equivalent? C minus AB all divided by A. I guess I could split the fraction up and have C divided by A plus AB divided by A. <gasps> Look at that! The A's would divide out and that would leave me with C divided by A minus B. This one we also have two ways to go. I think we're most comfortable distributing, so let's go ahead, distribute on both sides. On the right side, when we distributed the C, most often we write things alphabetical. So instead of CA, AC. We know that's possible because of commutative property of multiplication. We have a lot of stuff in this equation right now. Let's identify once again x, that's what we're solving for. So let's go backwards through PEMDAS to get x by itself. Let's undo the subtraction. So we're going to go ahead and add ac to both sides and then there's that ac plus ac. Do you remember what to do with that? Come on, write it down. You got it, 2ac there. And then we're left with ax equals that 2ac plus bc. Last step, undo that multiplication, so division property of equality, divide by a. When we divide that entire side by a, it's a good time to hug out that numerator and emphasize that the sum must be performed before dividing by a. Now wait a minute, did we need to distribute that a from the get-go? Just like the last example, I could divide the a off first, then add C to both sides. Well, that's a pretty cool way to solve for X. All right, your way had fewer steps, but can you prove those are equivalent equations? Well, yeah, I could, but I don't wanna. <laughs> I know, you'd have to get a common denominator, distribute, add the fractions. I mean, that sounds exciting. Let's do it. Let's not. Instead, pause and try K and L. How'd you do? Looking at that first one, you could have multiplied by B and then divided by A, but we could do that all in one step by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal B divided by A. Inverse property of multiplication. Check over that second one as well. Hug that numerator, X plus B, multiplying both sides by C and then subtract B. Let's stick together on this one, solving for X. So let's go ahead and multiply A on both sides. Why couldn't we get in there and just add C to both sides? Well, that was the numerator of that fraction. So there was an implied hug around that X minus C. So once we multiply by A on both sides, on that right hand side, remember to hug that out too, because we should be adding before multiplying by A. Now we see that the last step is simply add C to both sides. Easy peasy, no problem. However, 
I notice it's going to clean up pretty nice if I go ahead and distribute the A. So let's do that. When we distribute the A, we notice that the A's will divide out in that first term, and then we'll simply have B plus AD. Add our C, and we're done. How are you feeling about that next one? Oh wait, X is trapped in the denominator. This hasn't happened to us before. Okay, first thing we gotta do is get X out of the denominator by multiplying it up to the numerator. I could multiply out the C at the same time, but let's focus on X, because that's what we're solving for. Okay, now where's X? Oh, it's on the right side. I just have a D in front of X, so undo that multiplication, divide both sides by D. <gasps> oh, what happened? I have a big, gross double fraction. That's not okay. How else could I get rid of that D without dividing by it? Well, multiply by the reciprocal, one divided by D on both sides. One times B minus A, that's just B minus A in the numerator, and then D times C, CD. Using symmetric property, I can say X equals B minus A all divided by C, D. Hey, this one looks cool. X is in two places. But wait, what am I going to do? Which X do I solve for? Yeah, that is a problem. So let's rewrite this. How do I do that? Well, I need to factor out an X from both of those terms on the left-hand side. Now, when I say factor out, you might in your head think undistribute, right? Because X parentheses C plus D is the same as cx plus dx. Whew, now we have x in just one spot. Now we can go ahead and solve. Well, it's x times the sum c plus d, right? So we're not going to subtract d or subtract c. We have to undo that multiplication to get x by itself. So we'll divide by c plus d from both sides. All right, this last one is similar. I see x in two different places. The problem right now, though, is they're on opposite sides of the equal sign. So I need to get them on the same side of the equal sign. So let's go ahead and subtract dx, move it to the left, and just to make things a little bit easier, why don't we go ahead and add the c and move it to the right? Now this one looks a lot like the previous example. Go ahead and finish it. Do you feel good about that? x equals b plus c divided by a minus d. Now for emphasis here, why would we want to put the parentheses in the numerator and denominator? Because if we were going to evaluate this, we would have to do the sum of the numerator, find what that adds to, the difference of the denominator, what does that subtract to, and the last step is the division. So remember that order of operations and the parentheses emphasize it. Now what are they gonna do when they go practice on their own? You better communicate mathematically. Show those steps. Show those steps. <laughs>